What's up, guys? So, uh, a couple videos ago, I was talking about possible correlation between, um, excuse me, gang stalking and um, trauma-based mind control. And the reason I, I'm not saying that's true or not. I'm just, the reason that I bring that up is just because I have had some experiences uh, that I feel mirror or uh, overlap with the processes um, that people are taking through for trauma-based mind control. So um, it just seemed like similar tactics, basically, or similar characteristics um, between them. And so I was wondering, like, you know, what's the overall goal? Because it did seem like maybe like behavior modification was going on or they were trying to lead me towards uh, certain actions or ways of living um, using rewards and punishment type deal and it just it all felt just really weird and there was there's times in my um, experiences like the one I'm going to share now I told you I was going to share a video I've kind of put off sharing this one because I don't understand what was going on um, at point in this story you know it felt like like my thoughts were um how do I say my thoughts were I don't want to say dictating reality but um having a direct effect on the room that I was in and the people that were in the room and um it felt like they were trying to get me to tap into something without directly directly giving me instructions. It was like um, these subtle hints and just the whole vibe of this, this day was just weird. Um, and the things that were being said and the people that were involved and uh, in trauma-based mind control, there's like, there's things that they do to basically make the person dissociate and then create all alternate personalities inside this person and then they can program the alternate personalities to do certain things and when I was in this room it felt like all these people in the room were different parts of my personality it was strange you guys and so I'm just going to tell that story that's that's just like a, a little preview of what I'm going to talk about and it's hard for me to the reason I haven't shared this is just because it's hard to talk about and I don't understand what was going on so um, here it goes. So I was, uh, living on the street at this time, not in Seattle. It was like after my whole Seattle gang stalking experience, I went, I went into a detox and then I went into a treatment and I was there for like 10 days, but, um, I was going to talk about something else too, about the hive mind, but Gosh, this all sounds so crazy. Okay, um, I'll save that for another video because, anyways. All right, Dane, reel her in here. Okay, so I went from living on the street in uh, Seattle, going through all this crazy stuff. Most of my stories are from there, but uh, I went to detox and I went to this treatment facility down in Bend, Oregon. This is like central Oregon, kind of like deserty down there and uh, i was there for 10 days but i was still really like going through it from like i get like kind of ptsd from all my like <laughs> demonic experiences and um you know the gang stalking and i was like trying to figure it all out and i'm like trying to talk about it and obviously you know when when you don't have any understanding on it and you're trying to articulate it you sound nuts i mean even when you do understand it most people aren't going to hear you out so that's where I was at. No one could relate. And it was just kind of like, dude, what am I doing here? What was happening to me? And I just wanted all these answers. And I was still being driven by my uh, cravings for drugs. Like, you know, like I've, like I've talked about in my last, or not my last video, but a lot of my videos, like I was like a hardcore uh, drug addict, you know, using needles and all that. And uh, I was bonded to it. So... I was like there for 10 days at this treatment place and 
I never slept. And if I did, it was maybe like a couple minutes here and there. So for 10 days, no drugs. I'm not sleeping. Um, and eventually I just left. I just grabbed my stuff without saying anything and just kind of snuck out of there. And I started living on the street out there. So this is like the scenario. Um, I was on the street for a little bit. Weird stuff started happening pretty much immediately when I uh, left the house. Um, the gang stalking stuff started. Um, it was okay when I was at the house. It wasn't happening. But as soon as I made that decision to go back out, it was happening immediately. Like, like a block away from the treatment center, it started happening. Um, so I'm out on the street and basically I run into this dude uh, who had an apartment. Him and his girlfriend, they were super cool to me. Um, let me stay there, shower when I needed it, eat some food. And they became like friends to me. Um, the girl was really, really sweet gal. Um, she serves the Lord today. She does prison, prison ministry. They were kind of in their own um, mess at the time. They were drinking and stuff, but I didn't use drugs around them. Um, she didn't know I used, but her boyfriend knew I was messing around and he used to do drugs too. So there was a couple of times where he like wanted to get high. And so this is one of those times. And I shouldn't have been, you know, getting him high because dude was doing okay. I mean, he was drinking, but he wasn't all strung out. He used to, like, he did, like, a prison sentence and was kind of clean. But I was I was not living right at the time. So I was with him, and he wanted me to get some, some dope, right? And I... Got in contact with this dude uh, that I that I knew, and so I'm with two people now. The guy that sells the sells the dope and him, and we're just like kind of hanging out. And we go over to the store, and uh, excuse me, my neck. Um, we go over to the store, and we're walking through the parking lot. And we passed this car. There's only one car in the parking lot. And I like I looked inside it. Didn't seem like no one was in there. And we we're about to go in the store. And he goes, oh, wait a minute. I think that's my buddy. And he turns around and goes back to the car and knocks on the door. And then, like, this guy just, like, pops out of nowhere. Like, he's in the front seat. Literally, like, I walked right by the front driver's seat. And he was in, in there the whole time. And it's like I didn't see him. He just, like, was, like, like... <laughs> And this chair wasn't leaned back or anything. I don't know how. I don't know how I missed it. It was kind of. I just was like kind of scratching my head, but I'm like, all right, whatever. This dude knows him, and this guy was a. Uh, this da this dude was like from California. He was like, he's like a gangbanger, and like, he's a crip from California. And uh, the dude that was selling the dope, he knew him, so it's like he's like, hey, get in. So we get in with this dude, and uh, we're chilling there for a minute, and. Uh, the guy I was friends with, he said, Hey, I used to work at this hotel. He's like, I have a, um, I know these rooms that they're under renovation. They're under res renovate, excuse me, renovation. And, um, no one's going to be like house cleaners. Don't go in there. They're just kind of like vacant rooms that no one should be in and no one should be checking on. Like we can go there. I know how to get in. And when he's like explaining all this, I'm like, dude, I don't want to do this at all. Like, <laughs> I'm literally like about to say, no, absolutely not. And before I could say no, like the other two guys I was with, like, they're like excited, like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go to the hotel. And I'm just like, dude, so I'm like, I could get out. I could have got out right there, you know, but I'm like, all right, whatever. Let's, let's go. So I have a bad feeling about this already. So we're driving with this dude this crips driving and this dude is just nuts bro this guy is flying through these neighborhoods blowing through stop signs going like 70 down this uh side road like it was just it was crazy the whole ride i'm freaked out i'm just like dude this guy's about to kill us and uh yeah so we get to the hotel and it's not super weird at this point like the guy that sold the dope he was actually like a he was actually pretty uh, cool um, for someone who sold meth, you know. Uh, he was like a normal, like pretty nice, like, you know, he had a sense of humor. He was actually like, he was an all right guy, you know. I, I 
I didn't ever have a super weird feeling about this guy or anything. He was likable, and I got along with, with dude. And then I, the guy that I was with, um, you know, he was a little squirrely. I didn't really fully trust him, but... Uh, and then you have the, the crypt dude that I don't know that's obviously wild um, from what I'm gathering at this point, you know, the way he was driving. So anyways... We pull up to this hotel and we kind of like sneak into this place. And so we're in there for a little bit and like we kept getting high. And um, this whole night, I didn't, I forgot to tell this part. They were like, um, it's like they were planting seeds about the power of the mind. And I won't go into how they did that, but it was something that kept coming up was like, he kept saying, uh, you know, just, just believe it's going to happen. Just believe it's going to happen. Uh, and I, I was trying to get some heroin, right? And I hadn't been able to get heroin the whole time I was uh, out there. And so um, I was just like, that's kind of what was, why I was staying with them. Because, like, dude was saying he could get me some, some heroin. And um, I was like, okay, but I, I, for some reason, I just didn't think it was going to happen because I had a lot of people tell me they were going to get me some at this point, and it was like I couldn't find any in this town, which was weird. Like, I had so many people that were like, yeah, I can get it, and every, t every time it would fall through. So, not to make it about drugs, but this is just where I'm at. I'm just telling the story. Um, and I'm going to get to a point here. I just don't, when I go too fast, I'm going to skip over stuff and have to backtrack like I just did. So they were planting these seeds of like the power of the mind. And that was like leading up to what was going to happen. So I'm with them for a little bit. We got high. And then the dude that I originally showed up with, not the, not the gang member and not the dude that was the dope dealer, but the guy I showed up with was like, and he was the one that got us into the hotel. He's the one that knew the ins and outs of like what was going on with it he was like hey i got uh he's like i'll be back and he left i ended up he ended up not coming back at all so now we're in this hotel i don't know the backstory on this hotel at all so it starts feeling a little weird right so i'm with these two dudes and um uh, we were there for a little bit i don't know how much time maybe like half hour hour and then uh the dude that was sold the meth was like, uh, hey, I'm going to go pick that up for you. He's like, I'll be back. So pretty soon, I'm the only one in this hotel, right? And, uh, okay, so they, they leave and then um, maybe like an hour goes past, hour and a half. All of a sudden, the door opens up and... It's those two, it's the gang member, and it's the dope dealer. They show up with uh, three other people. So now it's me, I know the one dude, and then there's four like people I don't even know coming into the hotel, being loud, uh, being kind of wild, and I'm just like, oh man. So it was like, it was those two that I had met earlier, and then um, there was like this big... Uh, um, islander that came with them and then there was two uh like two white boys that were just like kind of sketchy and those those were the ones that were like heroin addicts right and so this is where things start getting like a little bit darker um so at one point i'm we're getting high i'm like in the corner of this room and then all um all four of them are faced towards me for some reason. It just like ended up that way, right? So they're all faced towards me, like blocking. I'm in like the corner corner farthest from the door. And uh, they're in front of me. And then this gang member, he starts telling me about how him and three of his, three of his friends beat the shit out of some dude, right? And so he's telling me this as they're all facing me and he's he's like narrating the story. The script was like, he's like, yeah, he's like, uh, so we had this one dude, right? And uh, 
he's like I started just taking off on him and he's like he's like throwing punches and stuff and he's like I elbowed him in the face and they're doing this like right in front of me and then uh the islander dude is behind him like shadow boxing <laughs> and then like he's telling the story about how him and uh his friends jumped this dude right as they're all faced towards me and I'm just like I'm like oh man I'm about to get jumped you know and like how do I get myself in this situation I don't even know I don't really know these people and I'm in this vacant hotel and they're being loud and I'm like sketched out I'm like cops are definitely coming and and now I'm gonna get beat up <laughs> I'm just like dude what am I doing right so that goes on and eventually like everyone kind of sits down and I was like that was weird but it already kind of put me on edge and um some other weird stuff started happening uh so the crib i'm sitting on the bed the two dudes that do heroin are are behind me um the guy that sold the dope was in the corner and then the the crib dude is in front of me like right in front of me and At one point, he starts talking. He starts talking to the room, but no one's even listening to him. And it's like he's talking directly to me because he's he's pretty much just looking at me while he's talking. And he said, "And this is the part when stuff like this was happening. It was so confusing that I'm trying to understand what's going on, and it feels so directed to me that I I'm just listening because I'm like, there's like that fear, and there's also me trying to understand what he's saying. And then there's a lot going on in the room." But he started saying this, he's like, he's like, he gets all serious, right? And he's like, he's like, you're asking questions about uh, people that don't want to be found out. He's like, and people don't like that. Because I was asking people, I was like, what's going on out here? Like, why does it seem like people are worried about me and following me around? Because I still don't understand what was really going on. And I was asking questions. And But this dude just met me, like, this dude doesn't know me, but... And then he started saying, he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, you're walking around here like you're all hot, you're all uh, gangster or something, but you're scared. He's like, when you're not high, you're scared, which was true. I was like, I could deal with it when I was high, like, because I kind of just went into like not not caring, you know. But when I was sober, man, it was like it was a lot to take in, like dealing with the pressure they were putting on me, right? And so it was weird. He knew stuff about me and he was also like basically threatening me uh, to stop asking questions um, about people that he doesn't, that I don't know about, right? And he was saying basically like they knew stuff about me and they wanted to stop. It was almost like he was like threatening me without threatening me. Plus the, the just the interaction he had before, these are like seeds that were planted. So... um it was so crazy, right? So, like, like I said, there were seeds being planted about, uh, like, the power of the mind. And the dude's telling me, oh, dude, he's like, you're not, uh, he's like, you're not going to get the heroin if you keep, uh, if you keep doubting in your mind. He's saying that. And then, um, and then at one point, this crip, he, he shows me his keys. He said, he said, hey, he's like, take my car. And he has the keys literally, like, in front of me to where I could just grab the keys. And, and I was like, what? He's like, he's like. He said, uh, yeah, the car's yours if you want it. And then I go, I can't have your car. And he's like, see, you just messed up. He's like, right now you could be driving off in, in a new car, yet you're sitting here uh, listening to me. And he just smiles, right? And then um, so he starts talking all serious again. And the crazy thing is, like, I don't know how this all started happening, but I had this thought that I was like, I'm sitting here lo looking at this dude who's like, you know, doing the, doing the whole threatening deal. And I, I had the thought, I'm like, no, this guy's, this guy's not threatening me. Cause they were, they were talking about the power of the mind. Right. And it was just like, everything kind of started clicking and I go, this guy's not threatening me. This guy's my friend. And I, and I like, I started smiling a little bit while he's like threatening me. And this dude goes from like, like super serious to like, he starts like, he starts smiling and relaxing. His whole body language starts changing. And it freaked me out because literally, like, my thoughts were being, like, mirrored back to me in the physical. I don't know if that makes sense, but that wasn't the only thing. Um, so, 
as this is happening, I have the two guys behind me. And every time my anxiety was going up, these guys started moving around like and making sounds. And this one guy was going <coughs> like if I was anxious, he was just kept doing that. And as soon as I like calm my mind, all the sounds would stop. And this dude would go from like a serious face to like calm. And it was like my uh, my emotions, my thoughts were like governing the temperature of this room if i if i was being still in my mind and being um just not not afraid at all it was tempering the room immediately like in real time and as soon as like i started thinking and my and my uh brain started racing this guy would start coughing <clears throat> and the room would start getting squirrely and this guy would get all serious it was nuts dude and uh so i'm sitting there and i'm trying to uh it's like I'm battling in my head, like, because if I just let my thoughts go, this whole room is getting chaotic. So I literally close my eyes and I envision just, uh, just being at peace. Right. And this is what I'm saying. I don't know what they were trying to get me to, to do, because at one point I'm, in, I'm like envisioning, um, just like a, a, a windy day, you know, and I'm literally feeling like my hair flapping and my clothes moving in the wind as I'm envisioning this it's like I was having like physical responses to all this and it was nuts dude because I started um I started uh goodness I lost my train of thought gosh I totally just blanked I can't stop now give me a second guys sorry so I'm just putting myself back in this room and it was really confusing what I was experiencing. So I, I'm i experiencing like this wind uh, going across my face and I'm having like a physical response. Oh yeah. And so I hear one of them behind me and they go, oh yeah, he's getting it. And then the other one's like, he's about to break through. And like literally it felt like it was coming to like a apex, you know, like something was going to happen. And it was like, uh, cause I was like, I calmed this room completely down and everyone like, st there was no like anger in this room. It was just so weird, you guys. And, um, so I was, I was focusing and then, um, what I was wanting was I want, I wanted heroin, you know? And it's like, I don't know. They were using, they were using my like lust for this drug as like a bait for me to stay in there. That's what was keeping me there. That's what that's what was always keeping me around these people who were doing this type of stuff to me. Because I really had nothing else. I didn't want to be their friends, you know. Um, they didn't care about me. Uh, and I was there for the drugs. So that was like, it was like the, the trap was always set for me. And then they could work around me because I was there for, they knew what I wanted, basically. So I'm sitting there and then like I hear a dude, um, he's about to break through and, um, and it felt like something was going to happen. Like it felt like I was tapping into something like weird in my mind, like where I had like power to control his room. And, um, I'm sitting there and I have my hand open and I'm envisioning, I'm envisioning a bag of heroin, uh, coming into my hand. And, um, like I said, they had been, they had been setting me up for this the whole night, like the power of your thoughts. Oh, it's not happening because you, um, you don't believe it. And then this room is like changing with my thoughts. And the dude tells me, Hey, if you would have believed you could have my car, you'd be, you, you know, you'd be off driving off. Now you're listening. Now you're stuck here with me basically. And it's like, they were conditioning me for this. And so I'm, and I know it's not, this all sounds nuts, right? But this is literally what was happening. And so I'm envisioning a bag of heroin, like, and then I'm envisioning in my mind's eye, my hand, which I have open on my, sitting on my leg like this. I'm on the bed and it's the same layout with the people, one dude over here, dude in front of me, two behind me. And I'm realizing like, these dudes are like a part of my uh, personality. Like this dude in front of me was almost like my personality when I was on meth. I was just like, you know, like I had that mentality of 
that's being portrayed to me this gang member like and that's like it was like a part of i felt like it was like a part of my personality and then the dude in the corner that was selling the dope this dude was like a nice guy he was jokey like i seen like part of him and me you know and then the two people behind me the heroin addicts were like sketchy and like you know like they weren't like personable they were just like they just all they cared about was the drugs that was part of my personality too and all these were like all these were like negative parts of my personality right it wasn't all it wasn't all truth but it's like i don't know it was just a very weird experience so i um i'm envisioning the bag of heroin in my hand sorry i got a little sidetracked there and i could see the bag and then i could see my hand but i could not it was like i could not see them come together in my mind's eye it was like it was like this like i could see it get close to my hand and then it would like pull back and then i'm like gosh why can't i do this you know and as i'm doing that dude like something hits my hand and i'm like no way and i look and it's a cigarette dude put a cigarette in my hand but still it was weird timing uh, i didn't ask for it nothing i'm just sitting there envisioning something coming to my hand and a cigarette came in so um yeah oh, i forgot to say um that hawaiian or the the islander the hawaiian dude he ended up leaving before this happened that's why i said there was four people in the room but yeah man this is kind of a long video so uh, the night goes on. Eventually, like, I did uh, pick up some heroin. That was a weird experience. Stuff happened, but the next day... So, like, we basically... It ends up with me, the dope dealer, and then the, the gang member, right? And I got, I got this heroin, and then <laughs> things get, like, sketchy again because uh, the dude... This crip kept talking about... Um, kept talking about how we were going to go out in the middle of nowhere and he's like really just hitting home on this point yeah there's no one within miles out here it's it's going to be awesome you know we're going to do this we're going to do that we're going to go out there yeah but no one's out there and yeah it's just like it's cool because there's no one around and <laughs> like and it just felt <laughs> felt really threatening right like i'm just like dude they're setting up to kill me <laughs> and you know call it paranoia or whatever but i mean it's kind of, it was like i said i've just been experiencing so much uh constant stuff like this where it was just like always felt like they were setting up to do something and then something happened and i got out and i don't know how much of that is reality like as far as i don't know if they were ever gonna do it or it was all just scare tactics or um you know or god really had his hand on me and they they were trying to actively or hurt me or kill me because this wasn't the old, only time something like this happened but um it never it never happened um yeah so so he's talking about going there and then and then like we're going through town before we're leaving i'm just kind of stuck because i'm kind of I'm kind of worried what will happen if I try to leave. And the dude that sold dope all of a sudden was like, hey, I'm, he's like, I'm going to go. He's like, I'm getting out. And he like looks at him and like looks back at me. And then the dude gets out. And then it was like, I felt, I'm just like, yeah, I'm getting out too. This is my stop. And the dude just like looks at me and he's like, he's like, all right. So I got out, and uh, I didn't end up seeing that guy again, the crib. But yeah, it was it was um, it was an experience. Uh, I feel like I'm missing some stuff, but yeah, like I said, with the um, with the trauma based mind control, they put you in. Um, they put you in a traumatic experiences and sometimes they do this through like making you witness um, like murders or like sacrifices and stuff or they put you in these fearful states to try to get you to dissociate. So that, now that I'm like thinking about it, that's kind of what was 
happening. Like, I don't know. I mean, it felt like I was in this traumatic state. And because, like, you know, I'm able to laugh about it kind of now, but, like, there was real uh, concern, like, what was going to happen to me, you know? Like, it was one of me and, and four of them. Five of them, wait, five, five of them, yeah, one. Yeah, there's five of them. I said four and then five earlier. Sorry, guys, but... Um, yeah, I was like, maybe they were trying to get me to dis dissociate so they could program, like, one of these personalities, like, further into me. I don't know what was going on, but this is just what happened, and I'm sharing my story because maybe you guys have had similar experience, but I guess I'll cut it off there. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> but I finally kind of told it, and this is the hard part, like, I have a... Uh, I have a hard time telling this whole story because there's just so much going on and um and it makes me confused like I'm like I don't, I don't know so I'll see you guys on the next one check you later